Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. This week you've heard a lot about mass testing of students and teachers as school starts back. I wanted to give you a little bit more background on how that plan came about and where we are now. Earlier this year, and in partnership with the Memphis City Council, we allocated $12 million from the Federal CARES Act funds assigned to Memphis for enhanced COVID-19 testing. Of that $12 million, the City, of Council, the City Council approved the initial $2 million for a pooled testing pilot. Um, Dr. Manoj Jane, who is available by phone if you have any questions, uh, really opened my eyes one day when he talked about the two people who tested positive in the White House a couple months ago. And he told me that was a good thing because it alerted everyone that those two people who were not showing any symptoms were positive with the virus. And if they didn't test, they wouldn't have known they were positive and they could have uh, uh, spread that uh, virus to others in the White House. So the importance of testing uh, rang true to me and I started reading more about colleges, Notre Dame and University of S Southern California talking about when they entered school in the fall, they would do targeted mass testing of students and teachers. So here we set, aside, set, up, uh, 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 set up a program. How do we build a program from ground up scientifically that made sense and logistically? Scientifically, we were faced with great tests that were really accurate, but they cost a lot of money, well over $100. Well, Dr. Jane and Jim Sweeney and others uh, informed me about pooling. And, and Dr. Jane is here uh, to answer more questions about it and Jim Sweeney. But the pooling method combines multiple patient samples and runs a test on all those samples together meaning you can, you can uh, test more and for less cost. If the result is negative, all the samples in that uh, test are cleared. If something comes back positive, each individual sample is then run individually to determine who may be positive. The FDA needed, needs to approve pool testing for each individual labs. And as we went through that process summer, this summer, I want to thank our congressional representatives, Senator Alexander, Senator Blackburn, Congressman Cohen, and Congressman Kustoff, who all advocated for Memphis and Shelby County to the FDA to get those reviews done quickly. To find out exactly how to implement the plan operationally, we created a testing committee that meets virtually three times a week and we started testing with our own city employees first. Without pooling, before pooling was approved, in part to test how we can operationally do mass testing. After a few successful internal rounds of city employees and some children in summer programs with parental approval, of course, we expanded the pilot to include teachers and are currently in the process of adding on a first come, first come, first, first come, first served basis, schools that are open for in-person learning this fall semester. Tiffany Collins with the city is in charge of that operation and she'll talk a little bit later. As of right now, we have the capacity to test up to 4,000 students and teachers per day and that number hopefully will grow over time. I want to make it very clear that we are not recommending in-person versus virtual schooling. What we are saying, if a school goes in-person, we are offering them another tool like masking and social distancing and good hygiene. This is just another tool if a school decides to do in-person lecturing. Now, Tiffany Collins with the city, who's directing the operations, will give a little more detail. Good afternoon. My name is Tiffany Collins, Deputy Director of General Services for the City of Memphis. As mentioned before by the mayor, in early June, we started testing the logistics process of how you could test 
thousands of people a day in a streamlined fashion. With the support of Poplar Healthcare, we created an innovative system that allowed for online registration. Since then, we have been successful, successfully te te testing students, and we have tested uh, youth in certain programs over the summer. We are now working with a couple of youth-based education programs in charter schools, and we're looking forward to helping them have a successful semester with ongoing testing. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Jim Sweeney. I'm the CEO of Poplar Healthcare. It's been a privilege to work with the city uh, beginning back in early May when Dr. Jane first called me. But a little bit about Poplar. Poplar is traditionally what you call a pathology and genetic testing facility. And in March, we made a conscious decision to pivot and begin providing COVID testing. Today, we run it on four different genetic testing platforms. And as Mayor Strickland pointed out, one of those has already been FDA approved for pooling and we've submitted a second one for it to the FDA to do additional pooling, which would give us increased capacity. But I also want to let you know, none of this could have been done without the great young people of this city. Um, as we grew our capabilities, we had to find talent that could run this testing. It's normally performed by what you call a medical technologist, and they're very hard to find. Uh, but with Governor Lee and the executive order, he expanded our ability to bring on college graduates who had degrees in biology and chemistry and begin having them work in the lab. We've been able to hire close to 25 of these young people. They went to the high schools here in this city and in northern Mississippi, and they've gone to University of Memphis and Christian Brothers. And we're grateful for the partnership that we've been able to create not only with the city, but with the two universities. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm David Sweat with Shelby County Health Department, and I wanted to give you an update on the um, numbers and some of the demographics and where we are with the epidemic today. As of this morning, we had 24,347 reported cases in Shelby County, and over the last seven days, we've averaged 256 new reported cases per day. So that is good news for us compared to where we were back in July. It shows that the force of the epidemic is slowing and the number of new infections is declining for the first time in several weeks. Uh, we've had some good news over the past couple of weeks. And in terms of a breakdown on the data, we have some graphics and slides to show you this, uh, this afternoon, starting with our distribution of cases by, eight, uh, by race and ethnicity. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see those graphics. So I don't know if you can see those graphics. All right, so all throughout the epidemic, we've seen a disproportionate burden that was borne by our black and Latino um, residents here in Shelby County. And that continues to be true, although it has, in, uh, in terms of the disparity, the, the uh, amount of the magnitude of the disparity has somewhat lessened over time. It's still a true statement that 80% of the people who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 disease in Shelby County are either black or Hispanic. When we look at our pediatric cases, we have seen uh, also a disparity, a disproportionate share of burden on our children uh, of minority populations. Prior to uh, recent weeks, we had as many as 40% of our children with COVID-19 disease were Hispanic. We've seen that that proportion has dropped. Now it's about 35%, but still it's a disproportionate share of the burden in pediatric cases being born in those populations. What is good overall is that the, the percentage overall of cases that are pediatric remains relatively small. Now, if we can go to the next slide, please. When we look at our mortality experience, what we see is, is very different from our disease experience overall. 70% of our cases are younger than 55 years of age, and yet 87% of our deaths are in people above age 55. So that disparity has been noted before, and it, it is, remains a reminder of why 
it is so important for all of us in Shelby County, regardless of our age, to follow all the recommendations to slow and interfere with the spread of COVID-19. And that means hand washing, social distancing, use hand sanitizer if you don't have access to soap and water. It does mean wearing a mask whenever you're out in public and also limiting the size of gatherings. And what we're trying to do is protect our older population. And in this instance, the older population begins at age 55 uh, from having fatal experiences. And that's an important thing for people to do of all age groups throughout the county. And in terms of comorbidities, we continue to see the same comorbidities underlying the fatal cases as we've observed all along. Certainly diabetes, being, having obesity, having any respiratory problems such as asthma, COPD, any sort of damage to the lungs from any process, and then very specifically, any sort of cardiac condition. And that cardiac condition can be as mild as having high blood pressure. All of those are noted risk factors, and we see that almost 80% of the people who have died had some sort of underlying heart condition uh, noted in their medical records. So once again, the reason we point this out is if you happen to have those comorbidities, if you happen to be diabetic, if you happen to be obese, if you happen to have a respiratory condition or a heart condition of any kind, that's especially uh, important for you to take all the precautions that is possible for you to take, and it's important for all the people around you to take as many precautions as they can to help protect you from coming in contact with this virus, and that will lessen our fatalities, which we are grateful our fatality rate stays low. It's about 1.3% of the diagnosed cases have been fatal. That is lower than the national average, but it is still a concern and we need to do everything we can to protect our vulnerable populations regardless of what the vulnerability is. With that, I will introduce uh, Dr. Randolph, the health, health officer, to talk about some other issues. Thank you, Mr. Sweat, and the mayor, and others. What I'd like to um, discuss briefly is an update on sports. As you well know, that sports have been a major topic in the media. I received multiple um, calls and questions about uh, whether or not sports, particular contact sports, are permitted uh, in the uh, county. As you may be aware, uh, Governor Bill Lee issued Executive Order 55, which primarily uh, permitted um, schools, uh, colleges, professional organizations uh, to uh, have uh, contact sports. He also uh, indicated that non-school sponsored sports activity uh, were to follow the guidelines of the Tennessee Pledge, the Economic Recovery Group guidelines. And on August the 6th, um, the Tennessee Pledge uh, Committee clarified uh, some aspects of the guidelines. In essence, they uh, indicated that non-school-sponsored uh, sports activities, whether youth or adults, are permitted to occur, and as long as those uh, agencies and programs adhere to the guidelines that were in the um, Tennessee uh, Pledge. Now I want to just make it very clear to you. The Health Department, Shelby County Health Department, our position is that we at the moment do not uh, feel that contact sports are safe. So we are not 
um, recommending uh, contact sports. However, you do not have to get our approval. And so some uh, schools, some uh, sponsors of uh, sports have submitted plans of operation. We'll be happy to review these, those and provide you with some technical assistance, but you do not have to have our approval. And our position is that still there is a high risk of transmission of the virus uh, associated with closeness and contact sports uh, by its nature involves close contact. So with that said, I will uh, stop and entertain any particular questions uh, you may have. Kendall Downing, WMC. Hey, everyone. I have two questions. The first is um, about the pool testing program, and it could be for the mayor or whomever. I was wondering if you could clarify, is this pool testing only being offered to organizations and schools within city limits of Memphis since it is Memphis funding or is this open to groups within Shelby County? Could you expand on that? Uh, <clears throat> right now, because it's Memphis funding, it's limited to schools within the Memphis city limits. What we'd like to do is build a program operationally and scientifically that could be duplicated um, all over the county. But right now our funds are limited to city limits. Okay. And then uh, my other question is for Dr. Randolph or David Sweat. Uh, the CDC director today um, was quoted in an interview where he said that if people don't follow social distancing, hand washing, and get a flu vaccine as we head into the fall, um, it could be one of the worst stretches of fall and winter months um, in American history as far as public health is concerned. Is that already a concern for you all uh, as we look toward the months to come? Thank you. I would say the importance of the flu vaccine is that it helps prevent the flu. And as you well know, uh, symptoms associated with the flu are also similar to symptoms associated with COVID-19. And it would be very difficult uh, when flu season hit to differentiate some, uh, someone who may have symptoms from COVID-19 and the flu. That is why testing is very important. And that is why getting the vaccine will, uh, because of the effectiveness of the flu vaccine, our position is that at least if you've had the vaccine, your risk or your likelihood of getting the flu is much less. And so that would be something that would be taken into account when the healthcare provider is evaluating you to determine, okay, uh, this fever, chills, and symptoms, is this flu, uh, this COVID, uh, knowing that a person has had the flu vaccine uh, helps in determining uh, the appropriate uh, protocol to follow. Tony Sloan, Fox 13. Tony Sloan, Fox 13. Jane Roberts, Daily Memphian. I have two questions. One, Mayor Strickland, did anybody besides Poplar Healthcare get FDA approval for the uh, pool testing? I'm, I'm looking at Jim Sweeney now. I think AEL did. Uh, did other labs get it? Yes. Yes, AEL has also received FDA approval. So uh, AEL, which is a, a national uh, company, actually has a Memphis office. They were also approved for pool testing. Uh, and may I ask one more question? I'm wondering, people seem to think that the reason we may have lower number of cases is that we are not testing enough people right now. Could uh, someone respond to that? Uh, yes, this is David uh, from the Health Department. We actually are one of the most heavily tested counties in the United States. In fact, if Shelby County were a state, we would still be in the top 10 nationally 
in terms of the proportion of our population that has been tested for COVID-19. Uh, this morning I did that calculation. 24% of the people residing in Shelby County have been tested at some point since March. So actually uh, we, are, we have a very robust testing profile here in Shelby County and very good access throughout the county for people to get tested if they need to be. Sam Hardiman, Commercial Appeal. Hi, my, my first question is for Mayor Strickland. Mayor Strickland, you noted that the pool testing is going to be paid for through CARES Act funds like Mayor Harris. I asked Mayor Harris last week, what are the plans beyond CARES Act funding to continue the public health infrastructure that Memphis and Shelby County are building when the CARES Act money runs out? Well, as you know, uh, all the CARES Act money has to be spent by December 31st. Uh, so we don't feel that we'll be short of money for testing uh, between now and then. To, uh, frankly, we don't have uh, any, any concrete financial plans right now to carry forth this program beyond that. Uh, hopefully, uh, the new stimulus package that Congress is looking at right now will include additional uh, monies for cities and some flexibility on how to use the money that we've already received. Sam, do you have a follow-up? We may have lost Sam. We'll go to Brad Broders with Local 24. Good, af good afternoon, everyone. Qu question for Mayor Strickland. What, for, for those 4,000 slots, will this be, will, you, will, will the city recommend asymptomatic or just those uh, with symptoms? It's only for asymptomatic uh, individuals, those folks who are walking around and uh, don't, don't realize they have symptoms or have no symptoms at all. Uh, so that's what it's aimed for with teachers and students. Thanks, and, and as a follow-up uh, to either Mr. Sweat or uh, Dr. Randolph, just uh, re regarding uh, what, what is your thoughts on the new study regarding the different uh, effects of different kinds of masks? Do you all have any thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, so we are aware that there's been some recent study, I believe that was done by Duke University or some someone, I haven't read the full report, but obviously there's interest in determining which kinds of masks are the most effective. And what we have seen uh, based on that literature uh, or based on the, the report of that literature that I've read is that the masks that are more similar to surgical masks that are worn, uh, masks such as, as this one, have a greater um, effectiveness than say the uh, stretchier uh, neck gaiter type of um, face covering that that many of us may prefer to wear. Uh, but these, if these masks are the most effective short of an N95 or a hospital surgical mask, then these are the ones we would recommend that people prioritize to wear uh, most often. Greg Akers, Memphis Business Journal. Hi, this question is for David Sweat. Um, you had said that 24% um, of the people residing in Shelby County have been tested at some point since March. Um, is that based on the, the, the number of 225,000 people who have been tested yeah. so far in the county right. divided by the total population of the county? Exactly, right. So that would be 24% of the people um, in the county if, if we have less than 940,000 residents with more than 225,000 people um, tested then that that's where i got that number yes okay so uh, does that mean that um is this does the 225,000 uh test uh, does that uh eliminate duplicates um people who have been tested multiple times or is that mm -hmm. all tests perform on all people uh there there could be some duplicates in there but the majority of people Certainly for the cases that have been diagnosed, those are unduplicated. So the 24,347 cases, those are unique individuals who have tested positive. But the vast majority of people who have been tested have only really been tested once. Uh, there are some people who have been tested multiple times, but it's not on a percentage basis. Out of 225,000 tests, it's not, um, it's not the dominance. 
Go back to Tony Sloan with Fox 13. Yes, so first question uh, for Contact Sports. I know you guys spoke a little bit about that, but how much of a concern is it for the numbers of cases to rise as these activities begin and go forward? Well, certainly let me just say something. Because something is legally permitted, doesn't necessarily mean that it's medically advised. And so we anticipate that there could be uh, cases as a result of contact uh, sports. We'll have to wait and see. Certainly any time that you have uh, closeness and contact, there's that risk, and we consider contact sports to be a high-risk activity. Uh, so if we get some positive cases, we would not be surprised. And my follow-up, uh, Tuesday there was a little discussion a little bit about the new saliva testing. Just wanting to know what's the update on that and, and the efficiency uh, so far. Uh, this is Jim Sweeney. Um, currently, Poplar itself is evaluating saliva testing. Uh, we're familiar with some of the reports that have come out of Yale and um, other institutions. Um, the concern with saliva testing at this point is whether or not it could be used as an effective uh, test with pooling um, and what that might look like. And there's always been a concern about a uh, loss of sensitivity um, in the detection. So um, we are pursuing a couple of different approaches with saliva testing. Uh, one using what you call extraction to get the RNA out and, and then put it on a PCR instrument. And another is to uh, use a different technique to put it straight on a PCR instrument. So uh, we'll be reporting with the task force in the next couple of days on some of those findings. We'll go back to Sam Hardiman with a commercial appeal. Hi, uh, my follow up is uh, again about testing. Um, to follow up with Jane's question, the testing results, the seven day testing results has reached a low not seen since June. Are the testing sites, the community testing sites being utilized to their full capacity? And if they're not, could asymptomatic testing resume? Uh, so what we saw earlier this week is that we were uh, on color-coded scale, we we're in green status in virtually all of our community test sites. And that means that there is plenty of availability. In fact, we have uh, 8,000 plus test um, available to Memphis or Shelby County residents this week through our test sites. And uh, <clears throat> my understanding is right now uh, there, there's more likelihood that if somebody wanted to get a test uh, with, with less um, screening for symptoms, they could. But we, we always have to watch that on a fluctuating basis. And if, as the uh, test results, I mean, as the uh, availability of tests goes down, we want to prioritize those who are sickest because they're more likely to be shedding virus and be detected. But right now, it's pretty widely available. And just call any of the, the sites on the uh, websites if you need to schedule a test, and you probably can get in. Alex Coleman, WREG. Yes, my question is for the mayor or either uh, Ms. Collins or Mr. Sweeney. I know a lot of uh, students and parents, for that matter, will want to know how this pool testing, how will it be administered, uh, especially when you also want to include and make sure there's a certain comfort level, which I know uh, some of the tests don't always have. So do we know that yet? I'm going to call up Ms. Collins here in just a second, and I want to tie that question to one earlier. Um, I said earlier that this is for asymptomatic people, people who don't have symptoms. If you have symptoms, you don't need to be going to school, which is where we're giving the test. If you have symptoms, you don't need to be going to work. Set up to go to one of the many places that were testing symptomatic people that Mr. Sweat just talked about a moment ago. So let me talk, uh, ask Ms. Collins to come up on, on the operations. As it relates to um, how children receive the test, the tests are administered by um, third-party medical professionals. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, we've tested children as young as two. 
and the test is far more well received than we had anticipated. Um, children are quite comfortable taking the test and we have not had um, any concern or pushback from parents. We are out of time. Are there any closing messages from any panelists? All right, no. thanks everyone. We'll see you next week.